you're back with us for the final segment of Testosterone Sports. This is a show that we love to do. Again, Eric, thanks so much for joining us here on the set today. Uh, we're going to jump right into it, this final segment here. The first matchup, Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Two teams who don't really like each other very much. I know Pittsburgh headed to the playoffs. Baltimore, only four victories on the season. Uh, do you think Pittsburgh has a chance to take care of business here, or uh, is Baltimore going to give them something? Yeah, that's a good question. You would think the Ravens would come out, uh, you know, angry. I mean, this has been a turnaround of disastrous proportions. They were 13-3 and three last season. Now they're looking at maybe going 4-12. and 12. You haven't had too many teams go from that high of a spot on the mountain to that low in the valley in one year. So I'd, I'd, I'd say the Ravens have to be angry and disappointed. Mm -hmm. But Pittsburgh, the problem with the Steelers has been they haven't been able to win on the road consistently. Now, their first playoff game will be at home, and then after that, in theory, they're probably on the road. So if I'm Mike Tomlin, I'm treating this like, hey, let's go win a game in a hostile situation. Let's keep getting some good positive mm -hmm. road mojo because they won a week ago Thursday night at St. Louis. Let's try to win at Baltimore. I know Willie Parker's out. That's a big loss. We'll see what Najee Davenport can do as, as the guy. I guess former gopher Gary Russell's in the mix now. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, one touchdown Willie. He's been lovingly <coughs> deemed here on this show. Willis McGahee also suffered an injury in last weekend's game. Doubtful to see him play in this game as well. Uh, San Diego headed to Oakland. These two teams heading in vastly different directions as well. Uh, Eric, this is going to be Jamarcus Russell's first start. Uh, are you interested to see what he can bring to the table for the Raiders? I am. And, and really what a loss year it's been because of the holdout. Mm -hmm. The Raiders botched that situation. Uh, early, you know when you take a guy number one overall, you got to cough up some sort of a package in the range of 50 million with a bonus of 15 yeah. to 20 million. That's just today's NFL, uh, and the Raiders blew that. They let too much time elapse. It's hard to believe you're waiting until this game to see what he can do as a starter. But yeah, I want to see what he does, and and I'm disappointed in the Oakland Raiders. I thought they were ready to take some strides and move up this year. That's a weak NFC West. But let me say this on the air: as a guy who's been very vocally critical of Norv Turner. Congratulations, Norv. You've gotten this thing turned around. Yeah. This team's hot. Uh, they're going to go into the playoffs on a roll. And, and you know what? You, you, you've coached well this year, along yeah. with Teddy Cottrell, the defensive coordinator who used to be up here in Minnesota. Uh, you know, I think it's safe to say that San Diego comes home with the victory here this weekend. Uh, I'd like you to shed a little light on this third seed here in the AFC uh, playoff picture because it, they're, the San Diego Chargers are tied with the Steelers. Uh, can you share with us what might shake down? Here? Yeah, well, I mean, basically uh, the one and two seeds are New England and Indy, so they're going to have the first week off. So your, your three and four seeds, it's either going to be Pittsburgh or San Diego, depending on how things shake out this week. Uh, your, your five seed is Jacksonville. Your six seed is Tennessee or Cleveland. Now five is going to play four. On paper, you want to avoid the Jaguars. Yep. So on paper, you want to get to the three seed, so you face either the Titans or the Browns at home. So really, the Chargers and the Steelers, they never say it publicly, yeah. but they are trying to avoid a first-round yeah. date with Jacksonville. Yeah, it's, it's kind of murky water, so thanks for shedding a little light on that situation. We really appreciate that. And it, it, it also shares with us or helps us to understand so that it makes it more interesting when we all watch what exactly happens. Normally, uh, Pittsburgh-Baltimore is only interesting you know, if both teams are going for it, but obviously not the case. Uh, this next matchup, Kind of an ugly matchup. Kansas City playing for nothing. The Jets playing for nothing. Uh, these two teams realistically only going for a better draft pick. Uh, but my question for you is, uh, the running game in Kansas City has always been a stalwart, for, especially for fantasy players. Uh, what's your personal opinion about Larry Johnson and the situation he finds himself in going into next season? Well, you know, he's, he's had a subpar year, and uh, that's been a, a tough situation. My hunch is he's, he's, he's got a lot left in the tank, though, I, I think. It's just a down year. I think Larry Johnson probably will come back and, and be able to put up some big numbers. Uh, this is one of those games. Herm Edwards used to coach the Jets. Now he's in charge of the Chiefs. Uh, both these teams were playoff teams last season. Uh, this year it's been a disaster. I mean, yep. Eric Mangini was Manginius a year yep. ago. Uh, now I think he's, you know. Mangina. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> and, and now uh, Herm Edwards, you know, who knows what with him. And, and yeah. So uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. One more question about this game. Uh, Chad Pennington, in your mind, is, are his days over in New York, and would you like to see him in purple? I don't want to see him in purple because I don't think he has uh, enough voltage left in his arm. Yeah, I think he's got a dead arm. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think he might be done in New York. I mean, look, when you have the kind of season the Jets have had, you've got to step back and look at everything. Mm -hmm. They may be looking for a quarterback. But I heard a stat the other day 
that there have been 60 quarterbacks that have played this season in the NFL. Ooh. So for all you folks who want to dog on Tavares or anyone the Vikings have run out there under center, remember, this is a league-wide problem unless yeah. you're in Indy, New England, Dallas, or Green Bay, or a handful of other cities. Just about everybody, two-thirds of the league has had quarterback issues. So maybe I should shift gears career-wise and go to try to be a backup quarterback. You need to get, <laughs> you need to get a tire here on the set and just yeah. start throwing it through the tire during the breaks. Yeah, yeah I mean, not there's a bad hope. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not uh, for the Falcons anyway. I don't want to be uh, behind center on that team. Uh, the final matchup of the game, one that has a lot of playoff implications in it, uh, Tennessee at Indianapolis. Eric, share with us what your thoughts are on this game. Well, Indy definitely is the number two seed. Mm -hmm. uh, they, like Dallas, don't have anything to play for. Tennessee, though, uh, in theory has everything to play mm -hmm. for, unless the Niners beat the Browns, which probably won't happen. Tennessee's going to need to win this game to get in. So uh, this is going to be fun because Tennessee and Indy, same division. Indy's, you know, had a, just a, a grip on the South that nobody can, can beat these guys. So I think Tony Dungy trots his guys out for a quarter or two, mm -hmm. and then you start seeing the backups. Is it Jim Sorge? Yeah. Is that the backup yep. to Peyton Manning? Get used to Jim yeah. Sorge and, and some of the other guys because Indy clearly has its eye on a bigger picture. Yeah, it's going to be Jim Sorge throwing the ball to Anthony Gonzalez and handing it off Anthony to Kenton Gonzalez, Keith all, right. all day. So <laughs> that's going to be interesting to see. I, you know, I, I guess I think that Tennessee probably wins this game. Uh, with Cleveland winning, which of those two teams has the, the tiebreaker? I believe Tennessee's in. I okay. think Cleveland needs Tennessee to lose or tie. So it, the Browns fans, who, who have, it's a history of heartache, oh, yep. going back to the days of you know, when John Elway would come in and beat him or Ernest Biner would yep. cough up the rock, uh, they might be in for more heartache. They're going to have to sit <laughs> and watch that Sunday night thing and agonize. But, you know, again, it's similar to Dallas-Washington. It's a divisional game. There's a rivalry here. And uh, it, it's not just an, you know, you can't just assume Tennessee yeah. is going to beat Indy at the RCA Dome. Yeah, just for you, Yeasty, the Browns going to be going, <laughs> going back to the pound and gnaw on the bone for about <laughs> nine months. They could think about this, what might have been situation. Oh. And, and, you know, I thought they were going to make it. I'm well, let me tell you not. this. I know we have about a minute left. Mm -hmm. They lost a game in Arizona, uh, Yeasty. You're, you're going you're gonna to spit up your alpo here when you hear this. <laughs> but they lost that game in Arizona. If you remember, there was a touchdown catch by, I believe, Kellen Winslow that was yeah. ruled out of bounds. Yeah. And they looked at it again, and they, 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 the call stood up, so the Cardinals won the game. Larry Fitzgerald Sr., whose kid plays for the Cardinals, Larry Jr., I asked him about the call. I said, was he in or out? And he says, bad call, forced out. Browns should have won. Crazy. And that would have put him in the playoffs. Yeah, that would have put him in the playoffs. So, you know, that's why they play the games. That's why the referees are out there. Uh, they have instant replay for a reason, and perhaps they should have used that a little bit more stringently here on that play. But... The Browns looking like they're going to have to play again next season and see if they can get their playoffs going next year. But a few uh, alterations on the defensive side of the ball, and I think they're a good team. So probably not winning that division, but a, a, a good team nonetheless. So, Well, this has been the Week 17 episode of Testosterone Sports. We'd like to thank you so very much for joining us this weekend. Uh, we hope that your, that your Christmas was very merry and that you all have a very happy new year. I'm looking forward to 2008. I know as well as you are, Eric. And... Uh, this will be the last time we see you here this season, but we're looking forward to having you on again next yeah, year. Yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for having me on a few times during the year. It's a lot of fun. You guys do a great job, and uh, I, I know it's going to get bigger and better in 08 for your program. Well, we, we sure <laughs> hope so. So uh, for, for myself, all of us at Testosterone Sports, for our director, Alex, for Yeasty, and for Jesse, we'd like to thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'm Jeff, signing off, Testosterone Sports. We'll see you next weekend. Aww.